Okay, so today we're gonna talk about Carl Gustav Jung, a Viennese, yeah, Austrian uh, psychoanalyst. He was a student of Sigmund Freud, and they were contemporaries of one another. Uh, How do you spell Sigmund? S i g m u n d. Yeah, he was a student of Sigmund Freud, and trained under him. Uh, for psychoanalytic therapy or psychoanalysis. So as Freud had his own ideas as to why humans are a particular way, he had some strange uh, concepts, let's say, some strange psychological things in his head which he projected to everyone else. And Carl Jung didn't really like that, so he broke off from him, from Freud and created his own brand of analytical psychology which is, that's what it's called, his branch is called analytical psychology so his conception of personality is that you have three parts to your conscious mind or three parts to your mind first is your consciousness or your ego the things that you are aware of that you keep in mind when you are making active thought and then you have the personal unconscious. This is also called your subconscious. These are things in the back of your mind. Personal unconscious. These are things in the back of your mind that they're still within your mind and uh, they influence you subconsciously. Influence you without you paying attention to it. And behind that is the collective unconscious. This is cultures and values that are shared by a group that influence your behavior or sometimes even your dreams in ways that most people do not really comprehend. So uh, among some of the things that he mentioned is the concept of archetypes. Archetypes are ancient or archaic images that derive from the collective unconscious they are typically how do i explain they are kind of like they are like particular themes that a lot of people share so uh for example of, let me just give you examples yeah for example of a archetypes are the great mother who is uh, basically the representation of a divine feminine. These archetypes can be found throughout human civilization and they all basically follow the same themes. So you have the divine feminine, the great mother, the divine masculine, the wise old man, the hero, which is uh, the story of the man who overcomes his weaknesses and achieves something great. There is the... Oh man, there's so few here. There is uh, yeah, the anima and animus, which are masculine and feminine aspects. Just regular masculine, feminine. There is the maiden, which are representations of innocent, feminine. There's a child, a representation of childhood. Uh, there are also warriors. So these are like warrior gods, Mars, god of war, sorts of things. And how many of these archetypes actually exist or has he come up with? There are quite a few, but... Are they similar to the MBTI where they're like 16%? Oh, no, 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 no. They're not the same. These things are basically like... In my, my own personal uh, interpretation is that since humans cannot directly comprehend God in all of his entirety so the best that we can do is divide him up into more manageable aspects so there's the masculine the feminine uh, the good the bad the bad is represented by the shadow these are things in yourself or in your culture that you may not directly want to confront because it is uncomfortable so maybe like in your culture you, there are a lot of 
or in your village, there's a lot of people who commit theft and murder, but you do not want to directly confront because then you have to come to the fact, come to the realization that, oh, I'm in a village full of murderers. So you tuck it away and you warp your reality to not see it. So you avoid seeing the truth because you're uncomfortable with the truth. Mm -hmm. And that is part of? That is uh, part of the shadow. Part of the shadow, okay. The hero, pers- uh, the hero archetype is a person who faces his shadow and defeats it, basically. Mm-hmm. So these are uh, like stories of the man defeating the dragon or defeating a beast. The beast is the representation of the uh, raw, the like untamed animal instinct that resides in every human. So the very base desires to want to fight, want to rape. Uh, things like that basically beastly desires Mm -hmm. and you need to defeat these desires in order to become a proper man to become a hero personas are another archetypes these are uh, personalities that you show to the outside world they can change they are like masks worn by actors in theater you put on a character when you talk to certain people, then you can drop them. But persona is just the collect collective term for any false identity you put onto yourself for some reason or another. So yeah, in every culture, there is some variation of these. So like in Hinduism, there are all the various deities. They're all different aspects and different manifestations of God. And in every basic, basically every pantheistic pantheistic religion, polytheistic religion, sorry, uh, they are different emanations of one supreme being, but they are then divided into more manageable and comprehensible to regular people. So each deity basically governs one aspect. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because you. So that concepts come from there, is it? Yeah. Okay. So these these archetypes are still present in us in some way or another. Like we still write stories about heroes because we we like heroes. We like to feel that we can overcome our our challenges and become better versions of ourselves. So just because a majority of civilization has abandoned these things as superstition. Uh, majority of people hold science up to be more important than religious values Uh, some people have just outright claimed God is dead there is no God we have killed him Uh, they claim science to be the ultimate truth and yet we are still influenced by these things Okay, so uh, in his idea, and this actually uh, overlaps with Hinduism, these ideas that people get come from a source. There's a source that connects all of us. In Hinduism, it's called Akasha or the ether, which is basically a, uh, I don't know how to describe it, some sort of field that permeates everything quantum field you can say but yeah information will travel through this and into directly into your brain as wandering thoughts so as you sleep you will have dreams and as you are daydreaming you'll have weird thoughts that you would not normally come up with it yourself and this comes from people are connected physically yeah other people have the thoughts and then they somewhat transmit it to you not necessarily other people it can be other entities entirely Okay. So, like, you you might hear stories that people who go to sleep, they have a dream of an amazing invention or a beautiful song, and then they wake up and they just write it down, and then it becomes an absolute hit. It becomes very popular, or, yeah, the song becomes popular, or the invention is very helpful to humanity. But they, you can't really say that they invented it themselves because it's just pure accident that they had a dream about it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Oh, 
I had something else to mention, but I forgot what it was. Right, uh, in the 18th, in the 19th century, the 1800s, two people independently had the same idea at the same time to create a radio. Uh, I forgot both of their names. Well, one was in Italy, one was in America. Marconi was the Italian guy. And uh, I forget the American. Created some, they both independently at the same time, roughly like within a month apart. They both had the same idea at the same time. Like, okay, I'm gonna create this device. And then they, they were both the first to develop such a device. So they never talked to each other? Never spoke not, to each other. They did not know each other existed, mm -hmm. but then they came up with the same invention. Yeah, at the same time. That's important though. It's not like one year apart or anything. It's like both of them had the same thought at the same time. So in, in Hinduism, there's a field called Akasha. It is often translated as the sky, but is more accurately translated in English as the ether. Ether is a field that permeates, yes, correct, a field that permeates all of reality. Uh, and in this field is every information that has ever existed, is existing right now or will ever exist. In Hinduism, there's a place called the Akashic Library, which is, it's not a real place, but like it's a abstraction. And in this library, is all the information that has ever existed in the form of books. So you, if you can make yourself, if you are able to reach this place through meditation, you are able to access large volumes of knowledge mm. regarding anything that you could possibly want. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it is, it is said that it is through this field that entities can communicate with humans put dreams in your head, put thoughts in your head, and this is how they communicate with us. Other than actually whispering into your ears directly. Yeah, so uh, it's a lot of things. There's, for some reason, there's always the same stories that are passed down throughout history and throughout different cultures. So there's always, uh, masculine divine father figure uh, f gentle motherly feminine divine figure yeah, heroes such and such the monster the beast the shadow so yeah he suspected that is uh, Carl Jung suspected that is we are all connected through the collective unconscious and it is through this throughout this all of humanity is connected with a sort of psychic ability very latent very weak psychic ability which is how we can in some way or another communicate without communicating I think that's all that I have to say or have to talk about on this topic. It's actually very interesting. And there's a lot more that I'm just glossing over because I'm only talking about archetypes, which is my favorite part. 